Welcome to Podcasting Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle. Thank you so much for joining me here on the show. And we're going to try something a little bit different. So over the last couple of years, I've been, let's say, slow to put out some of all of this material. And I want to, I was starting to think about what is my favorite thing in terms of working with clients when it comes to podcasting. I'm not necessarily writing a book, like sitting down and concentrating for more than 10 minutes is difficult for me, but I really love the one-on-one -on -one interactions with people. So I thought about trying out a few lives, maybe doing two or three or four lives, uh, talking to people and soliciting your questions. So yes, Facebook user, this is live. It's live live. It's not a recording. I'd love for your comments. I'd love for your questions. So if you're watching and you've got a question about podcasting, then please leave a question. I've got a friend, Dale. He's got some questions about podcasting. He's going to pop on about 15 minutes from now and take questions. But this is meant to be interactive. And if you're listening later, then please go ahead and leave a question on the podcastingandplatforms.com post for this episode. And then we'll answer next time. So... I have been asked several times. So before we get started, before we take your questions, I was going to talk a little bit about if it is too late to start a podcast. Now, I think it was about a year ago, and I was on a client call. So for listeners and those watching, I do consulting for podcasting and brands. So I work with big organizations. One of my clients is the Indiana Historical Society, and I teach their staff how to do podcasting. And then there are individual clients that I work with one-on-one -on -one and help them with their needs, be it just answering questions here and there or editing their podcasts. And I was on a sales call, my very first sales call. I did not land the client. He was actually a sales trainer, which was a great person to start with because you're talking to someone that actually does sales training for a living. And his concern was, is it too late to start a podcast? I don't think so. And I think there, this question comes up a lot since really 2005, right? There's something about podcasting that makes people feel like there's too many podcasts. And I think it's because it's a, it is a new media industry that has grown up under the glare of a brand new in industry within social media. So people are seeing it in real time a little bit more than maybe they would have seen other industries like the social media world develop. That had a lot of VC cash. But this has grown up with a lot of conversation around it and a lot of figures. Edison Research is the gold standard of podcasting research. And they're always doing all kinds of different data to see if, to gauge and measure podcasting. And I've got a slide here. It gives you some insight into exactly what's going on in the podcast world. So is it too late to start a podcast? Let's get some perspective of how many podcasts there are, right? According to Podcast Industry Insights, Apple Podcast has 2.5 million podcasts with 76 million episodes versus 2018 when they had 550,000 active podcasts on iTunes with 18 and a half million episodes published. All right, so that's a big jump in just, what, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, five years. It's gone from half a million podcasts to 2.5 million. All right, now let's confuse that even more, all right? The Podcast Index, which scrapes the internet for RSS podcast feeds, says there are 3.8 million podcasts. Spotify says in their directory they've got over 5 million podcasts. Five and a half million, excuse me. Now, out of all this, how many are actually active? Podfade is real, right? What's Podfade? That's when you start a podcast, you're super excited, you spend $1,000 on equipment, and then all of a sudden... You're seven episodes in, you're not rich, you're not famous, and you realize it's a lot of work. And so you just fail. You maybe put out one episode a week, and then you start putting out one every 
month, <laughs> then you realize it's been six months and you have given up. That's pod fade. Now, so how many are actually active? Out of all this, only 17.7% are active on Apple's directories. That means only 455,000 are publishing episodes within the last 90 days. So for 30 days, people who have put out an episode in the last 30 days, that number is only 206,000, which is not that many at all. Uh, now, in the last seven days, 105,000 people, 105,000 shows, I should say, have published an episode. So that shows you that there is not that many people who are actually out publishing episodes, which means that there is a big advantage to getting started in your niche. So we've talked about niches before, but out of a 5,000 podcasts that have published in the last seven days, or let's take the generous, the last 30 days, okay? 200,000 people. Let's say, what's, what are you nerdy about? Lord of the Rings. I've been really into it lately. I wanted to go and check and see what kind of podcasts there were. There are probably about a dozen podcasts. Let's actually do this live. This episode is live, so we're taking your questions. Please just leave a comment, and we'll take your questions. Let's go to the Apple Podcast platform, and let's go to the podcasts. thing. Let's search Lord of the Rings and just count the podcasts, okay? So this is something that's a little nerdy. So one, two, three, four, so six. There's 18, 19, 20. It looks like there's roughly 30 podcasts that are talking about that. Let's just spot check. How many of them have pod faded? October of 22. Prancing Pony. Sunday. Okay, so they're still around. They're still around. 2020, they're gone. 2022, gone. Sunday. Right. So if you start to go through your vertical, let's, let's say you want to start a Christian podcast and you're reformed. Reformed. Right. That's a big one for podcasters. Presbyterians are real nerdy, right? There are, looks like about 40, 30 to 40, right? So let's spot check those. I know these are active. The Reformed Gamers. All right, April 17th. Reformed and Confessional Friday. So they're pretty active, right? But it just shows you 30 people is not a huge amount of competition. It's really not. So let me pull up a slide. I'm working on a course, and I'm going to pull up a slide here for you that shows you the difference between this and other genres. All right, so let's talk about books. So we have around 2.5 million total podcasts, and roughly half a million of them in the world are active. How many books were sold in 2022? 788.7 million books. Is it too late to write a book? As of 2022, there are nearly 600 million blogs and 38 million YouTube channels with only two and a half million podcasts. So for every podcast, there are 300 blogs and 19 YouTube channels. So again... For every podcast, 19 YouTube channels and 300 blogs, All right, Those aren't even niche specific. So podcasting is far from its saturation point. And what you always have to remember is that you are going to get other people in your vertical eventually pod fading. And so people then start to look in their genre, in their vertical, in their interest for somebody else that is active and is putting out a great quality product. So that can be you. Don't let the amount of podcasts that you see in your face overwhelm you because that doesn't mean that it's too late to start a podcast. The technology is new. It hasn't been adopted by a lot of baby boomers, for instance. It hasn't been adopted in mass by many different people. Let's just look at 
the monthly podcast listening demographics, according to the infinite dial that was released in February of 2023 for podcast listening, only 21% of people over the age of 55 are listening to podcasts, which tells you that, okay, maybe these boomers haven't adopted the technology, but maybe there's just not content for them. Maybe there's not a compelling content that really grabs hold of them and pulls them in like it does in younger audiences. How about age 35 to 54? Only 51% of millennials, you know, the young millennials through Gen X are listening to podcasts. And then 12 to 34, those Gen Zers and millennials, the bulk of them, 55% are listening to podcasts. That's going to only grow as people continue to adopt, which means the more people that continue to grow into podcasting, look at this chart here. If you're watching on YouTube, in 2006, podcast listening in the 12 plus total of the population was only 11%. Now it's 64% of the population has listened to a podcast. So it has exploded. Just look at the number from 20, really 2015 is when it started to really grow as cultural consciousness came online. It's double from then. So where will we be in another five to 10 years? Will that number be 80%? And the amount of people that will be coming in to podcasting will only benefit you as you start to really bring people in. Is it too late to start a podcast? In my estimation, absolutely not. The amount of people that are familiar with podcasts are only going to grow. Every generation is expanding the audience. The pie is getting bigger. People who ask the question, is it too late to start a podcast, think in terms of a piece of pie only having so many slices. That's not how digital media works. It's ever expanding as more people adopt the technology. So there will be more people coming into your vertical. And if you're choosing a small niche, then you're going to get a lot of people coming in. So we've got a question here from Stone. What's the best way to get over the initial hump of going from zero to, say, 100 listeners? So this is actually a really hard thing to do, to go from zero to 100. It's probably harder to go from zero to 100 than it is from 100 to 200. And it is probably the most discouraging phase of a podcast is that first 100 regular listeners. I will say, compared to my first 100, it took me about three years from 2012 to, to it was really two years, 2014, to get to 200 listeners. And that's because not many people knew what podcasting was. Almost all of my clients now get to 100 listeners within the first six to nine months. And it really depends on a couple things. Your, for, your first listeners will be your personal circle. It will be your friends. It will be your family. It will be people that maybe you have contacts with on social media or for email lists or in your web newsletter. So the bigger the starting point in terms of your footprint, the more people that you're going to be able to reach. I think that the best way to grow a podcast is to be a guest on podcasts and to invite people to be a guest on your podcast. If your content, let's say you're doing a nonfiction narrative podcast, like we just had Bruce Carlson on the Chris Spangle show to talk about his narrative nonfiction podcast about the fall of the USR. It would make absolutely no sense for him to have us on his podcast, but it made sense for him to come on our podcast as a guest. And you know how he got on is he asked. And that is the thing that I've noticed that most people will not do, including myself. They don't ask to go on other shows. And often people are really looking for guests and they really do want to come on the show. So how to get from zero to 100, it is grinding it out. It is sharing your content on your social media and asking your friends and family to listen, sending personal messages to your friends and family you got to go almost full MLM on this. You got to, you, if you are proud of your content, I saw in a podcasting group two days ago, this person said, I really just post my podcast on my website and I'm not getting many people listening. And everybody was like, are you posting it to Apple? And they're like, no. Are you posting it to your social media? No, I've never posted about my podcast. Now you know what you're not growing. So if you are 
actually interested in growing your show, you've got to be proud of your product and you've got to promote your product like you're proud of it. And if you're not proud of it, then you just keep working at it. You start improving it and take no prisoners. Uh, and another Facebook user here. What's the easiest way to get a co-host to actually want to podcast with you? I'm thinking about this a lot lately. I'm guessing this is one of my other co-hosts, and I'm wondering, why did I choose any of them? I don't know. I think the number one sign that somebody is your co-host is that you want to spend time with them. You want to hang out with them. You want to grab drinks with them. You want to talk about that shared interest together. And maybe they're your super best friend. Maybe they're an acquaintance that you want to have a little more conversation with. Maybe it's even your spouse. I know a lot of podcasters who don't get a lot of time to talk with their spouse, but they get to have that one-on-one -on -one face, one-on-one -on -one connection with their spouse when they're doing a podcast. So I think that's a great one. There are definitely, my social circle is made up of my co-hosts in the group chats and, and when talking with them. So how do you make friends is really the question that you're asking, Facebook user. How do you make friends? I think you've got to find local community and get some get involved. I think with the Libertarian Party, for instance, the best thing I got out of the Libertarian Party was not wins, didn't win any elections, but it was an excuse to meet other like-minded people, grab a drink, have a conversation, get dinner. And from there, you find people that you click with. And there may be people that I click with that I don't personally, I don't want their ideology on my podcast. And then there are some people where you're like, I agree with them totally, but I just don't get along with them and can't really hold a conversation with them. And they're not that interesting. So it is a little bit of difficulty, but it's like sales. You've got to go out there and you've got to hit the pavement, go to local meetups, meet some folks, and then get to know everybody a little bit better. And I think in person is really good. If you don't, if you live in a rural area or maybe there's not any kind of like local meetups, there's no groups that are kind of meeting. Maybe there's some folks on social media, on Twitter or in Facebook groups that you drive with. I would just say, hey, I know this is a weird request. I really like talking to you. You want to hang out, hop on a Zoom sometime? And that feels a little bit vulnerable, but I don't think you have to lead with I'm interviewing co-hosts. But I do think you can find reasons to spark conversation that's one-on-one -on -one in a little bit of a better way. And maybe you'll go, the other, the last thing that you can do that I would say is rotate in your co-hosts. So this is one thing I've done with We Are Libertarians Forever is I'll see somebody in the community that is around the podcast that's really into the show. I'll invite them on as a third chair co-host or maybe just on for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And if it goes well, then about a month later, I'll invite them back on again. And then eventually they become your co-host because you just have enjoyed having them back on and they're really into the opportunity. One last question before we go to Mr. Reno Redding Reddington and his questions here. Is there anything you can do to gain verbiage and practice public speaking to create a more compelling listening experience? Yeah, I would recommend Toastmasters. Almost every community has a Toastmasters that you can go and join and you write speeches and you deliver speeches in front of a room full of people who are also maybe not that eloquent and working to fail in front of each other. You have a safe place to do it. I would also say maybe trying some open mic stand-up. I know that sounds really intense, but that's like the most, to me, that's one of those things where it's like, all right, that's like too vulnerable. It's too big of an experience to go up and do jokes and fail in front of an audience. But I think once you've done that, then it doesn't really matter. You've gained some ability to speak. I think you've just got to practice it. I wrote a note today in my notepad to a person, a friend that I used to speak with regularly that we no longer connect with. And uh, I was thinking about them and I wanted to send them a text message. So I wrote it out in the notepad today and then decided not to send it. Abraham Lincoln used to write multiple letters a day to people and then would never send it just to get that off of his chest, right? So I think you can do a podcast and you can get that experience and listen back and then never publish it.
and edit it and learn to edit it. One way that I learned to have good diction early on and not have a lot of ums and not have a lot of filler words, I've gotten, I was listening to an original radio show from 2005 of mine on WXNT where I first started in radio in 05. I was so much better. Uh, but I think I've just gotten a lot more comfortable behind the microphone over time. But when I was there, I didn't feel comfortable in any way, shape, or form. And so I would do a newscast, and I would do that newscast a hundred times, literally, until I sounded in my head like an actual news person on the radio. And I realized, if you're talking to me in real life, this is how I really talk. Like, I'm not talking with my diaphragm as much. I'm just, like, maybe lower energy, and I'm not ex talking as fast. But I have a radio voice and my nieces find it hilarious. My daughter finds it hilarious um, because when I start talking, I'm talking a lot faster with a lot more energy. So you just learn that stuff by trial and error and doing things behind the scenes that nobody will ever see. You don't have to publish everything you ever record. I may be guilty of not doing that. I probably should keep back more. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. So I think I like the format here, the flow, the first 10 minutes kind of covering a subject, then taking your questions, those second 10, and then the last 10 minutes of the show, talking to a real life human being. If you want to come on for just a free conversation, I do consulting. I can help you with your podcast. You can hire me by the hour. You can hire me for the project to come through and help you improve any aspect of your pro if you don't have a podcast and you want to launch a podcast you can contact me at chris at podcasting and platforms.com i can help you get launched if you've already got one and you need an audit to go through your podcast if you have an organization that needs to be taught how to podcast then please hit that email contact me i'm available to do that stuff but it's always going to be free here so this is a great opportunity to get your question asked so if you want to come on the show, chris at podcastingandplatforms.com. You can also send me a note on the Substack at podcastingandplatforms.com. And we'd love to have you on the show. Now, here is my buddy, Dale. Do you look fantastic? Dale is one of those guys. Thank who, you. He's a, he wears a three-piece suit every day. Yes, I do. I do it because I can. And for me, it's like armor. Even if I screw up something at work, I still look better than the other guy that I'm across from. All right. There well, you have it. Reno Reddington, please put a hit out on that bird that's in the background. <laughs> Don't worry about it. All right. So let's get into it. What is your question what, that you'd like to ask about podcasting? I guess my main question is I'm doing some fits and starts with my podcast. I have one episode up and our associates hassled me about it the other day. And then one of my personal associates did IRL. I'm just trying to figure out, I have so much that I want to talk about in terms of what my show would cover. I don't know how to do the logistics of it, if that makes any sense, because we've had this conversation in the background, but what, how would one go about trying to get a slice of life podcast? Would you do a podcast by subject? Would you have a series? I guess that would be how I would frame up the question, if that makes any sense. Yeah, let's clarify it a little bit. So give me like the lay of the land here. You want, it's like the Chris Spangle show. There are many aspects to Chris Spangle. He is a deep person with many interests, right? So I struggle with this too, I understand. The Dale podcast, are you looking at where you want to talk about this? You want to talk about that and you want to talk about this? Is that kind of what you're saying? You what it is... It's a, it's, I call it the Sacred at Mulgari podcast because the other, the English version of that was taken by some, by some folks that I don't associate with. What I'm trying to do is essentially, I want to be a baptized Adam Carolla show where we push funny, but we still color inside the lines on some things. I'm not going, I'm not doing these bits about these porn stars and whatnot, but I'm still pushing lines and being funny inside of a, we'll just say Christian, inside of a Christian lane where, yeah, there's there's still some swearing. We push the lines on comedy and then try to reel it in and give some, give folks at the end of the podcast something they can take away and put it into their life, if that makes any sense. Trying to bridge the gap between entertainment and self-improvement. Eh. I don't know how much of a bridge there is, Spangle, and uh, Chris. And what you're talking about, and I'm gonna just put you on mute. Is I think you're talking about two different things. There's you're thinking there's tactics, and then there's content. There's style, mm -hmm. and then there's content. So, entertaining is more of a style 
that than your content, right? If I tell you, I've learned this lesson at some of my jobs. If you say you're funny, you're probably not funny. So you don't want to walk around telling people you're funny. You don't want to put in your description that you're funny. Because if you say, this is a hilarious podcast about blah, 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 it's a really high subjective bar to me, right? If you say, this yes. is the most entertaining podcast on the earth, that's a really hard by, high, high bar that you've got to meet. People don't really feel that that's very authentic. So I would say that if you feel that there is some sort of choice between entertainment and religious content, or is it being, I know you're Orthodox, and I know that the, I guess, Latin, it, it means that it'd probably have a religious bent. Yeah, have you considered giving the bird a, a co-hosting spot? Maybe you can get that bird to be your co-host. It, it is, like, entertaining is just a style. Comedy mm -hmm. is a style. That is not the substance. That is the okay. vehicle with which you would drive. So what is the content specifically? What are the topics? That, give me, like, the five podcasts that you've thought about in your mind that you would do. That's a tall order. I think one show would be trying to bridge, building a bridge between orthodoxy and Protestantism, trying to, it, not so much evangelizing, maybe partly, but helping people understand what it is, just because so many things that I've run into, people don't get it. They'll say that I'm putting tradition above scripture, that sort of thing. I'm getting some of the beats of what goes up behind the scenes on the, in the, in one of our group chats. I would say also giving people hope, trying to help help people bolster their courage in their journey, whether they're Christian or not. I would, I think Christians would find my, mostly Christians would find my podcast appealing, but at the same time, you know, just with the way the world is and being online so much, I give everybody a hard time about paying attention to the news. All that. Just shut that stuff off and heads down, live your life. And married life, just friendships. I, like I said, I'm having a hard time nailing all of this down. I'm, so that's kind of where it would I don't go. Know that, yeah, I don't know that. Yes, it feels a little bit all over the place. But is what you're really talking about is like a whole life plan podcast, a whole life transformation podcast, right? The totality of a person, what are the values that you live out? that you think are important that can help people succeed. And maybe you don't always name, but you're, you're trying your best. And these are some things that you've learned. So I don't feel like you're as all over the place as you think. I think you need to drill down on what that central mission statement is for my particular podcasting career. Building community is just a huge part of what I do. And everything that I do is about building community. Doing this podcast is helping people build communities in their life that will enrich their lives the way that my We Are Libertarians group has enriched my life, the way that the Pat Down has enriched my life. So Go ahead. with the Chris Spangle show, a huge message of it is quit looking to the government, quit looking to big business, look to your community and how can you engage in your community to make political change, personal change, whatever that change is, but do it together, live life together. So community is just a huge value that I hold. And that to me is the central tie. As long as commu helping people build some sort of community is tied to that podcast, I'm willing to do it. Just pure nonsense I'm not interested in. So I think, I think what you have to do is drill down a little bit more into the values that you're really trying to get at with your podcast. Because it's okay to have a broad array of episodes as long as the central message of the show really has a solid mission behind it. And I think so I think you need to think that through. Does that make sense to you? It makes sense. And in fact, something you said resonated with me. You talked about building community. And I'm not trying to be a copycat here, Chris, but I that's especially within the last year, I'm gonna leave some of that backstage. But within the last year, I have found being connected with folks in my church and at work, just something that's been greatly enriching to my life. Because in my previous job, I was alone a lot, working on people's houses, that sort of thing. And I enjoyed it because I had control of the work and all of that, but it was just, it was tough because it was isolating, and especially with what happened in that year that we don't talk about, those two years. But I, 
I think I can, if, if you, if I may, I think I'll start there with what you're talking about with building community. I don't know how to go about it, but I, I think that's a good spot to start. No, I think it's perfectly valid to say, you know what? 2020 was really hard. And then I found something that really made things a lot better. And that was community through my church and my faith. And I want to, ex- I want, you, you're almost like deconstructing that for people. So how you're at an end goal maybe, and you want to re-engineer how you got there to help other people do it. <laughs> and maybe that's the way that that's, you work that into a mission statement that becomes the description of your podcast that kind of clarifies it for people and may, you know, clarify your title a little bit because not everybody's going to be sanctuary, scripture or something. What did you call it? It's a little difficult to remember, to be honest. Sacra et vulgare, or sacred and vulgar in the English. I could just change it to the English. I would maybe stick with sacred and vulgar and add a word so you're not stepping on the other folks' toes. But I, I would stick with the English version. You're just going to get it, – it's a little more interesting. It's a little more sticky. Mm. People are going to actually search for sacred. They may not search for vulgar, although there may be some perverts out there that – Search in podcast engines for vulgar, but here's and here's my justification for that because so much of our so much of our life is spent in the day to day. Vulgar didn't mean saying the seven words you're not supposed to say on TV. It meant the day to day life. It meant working in the field. It meant going to work, going to the office, whatever that meant back in the day. And so that's what I'm trying to bring to bear in that you you have, and then you go to church on Sunday and it's a little different, but it's not really in all of that. And I'm trying to bring those two worlds together or the sacred and the common something like that it that's i've already been through what a rebranding already spangle i don't want to do it again but i guess i have to because your leader says so i'm just being honest with you when i look through so sacred and secular is not taken by anybody you've got the alliteration of the right but i but the thing of it is my on the whole the podcast is nowhere is not secular at all secular has ties to atheism and non-religion or ill religion that sort of thing so that's not what i'm going for yeah i'm open to other ideas but i'm just i'm shooting that one down because that has a certain connotation where it's like what it's really splitting apart at that point but trying to bring the the, i guess the daily life into the bringing the sacred into the daily life and just letting the daily life be where i'm going but anyway all right, maybe if you could send us some suggestions, we'd love to hear your comments on what Dale ought to name his podcast. Please go to Podcasting of Platforms. Comment on this episode, is it too late to start a podcast? And leave us a comment, and I'll make sure that Dale gets it. Dale, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. Yes, it was. Thank you, Chris. And thank you to Dale for, uh, yeah, by the way, Dale, thank you for popping on in five minutes. I appreciate that. You're welcome, Chris. I'll do just about anything for you as long as it's within certain guidelines. All right. Yes. As long as we keep it sacred, not vulgar. All right. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. If you'd like to hop on here, please, Chris at podcastingandplatforms.com. You can join me here. Love to have you on a future episode. May do one of these a month, may do two a month. I don't know. I'm really hoping to get your feedback on if you prefer this or if you prefer the other way that I've been doing it, which is like, 10-minute little monologues that just give you hyper-focused chunks. Love to get your feedback. That's a great way to talk to your audience, by the way, is to do feedback. So thank you so much for joining me here on Podcasting and Platforms. Make sure you go and sign up for the email at podcastingandplatforms.com. Follow us on social media and subscribe to this podcast on anywhere you can subscribe to podcasts. Thank you again, and we'll see you again here on the next Podcasting and Platforms.